everyone, this is the Codemaster here, and today we're going to be doing part two of No Limits. And in part one, I showed you how to make a basic wooden roller coaster. And using those concepts, we're going to build a B&M sit down, or whatever type of B&M you like. But I'm going to build a sit down because that can demonstrate more advanced elements such as loops. And everyone loves loops, don't you? Yes. Okay. So let's get started. So we're going to create a new coaster. Let's call this steel example. I'm going to call it that. You can call it whatever you like because it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Um, I want to do the same thing as we do with a wooden coaster. Start vertex. Make a station, preferably about 20, 15 meters long. And um, always add that little bit at the end of each segment of the station. There we go at that. So we've got a completely straight station now. Now, to figure out how long we need to make the station for, because before we just winged it, I'm going to figure out, I'm actually going to take some time for this, so I'm going to add the type separators in first. Now, what we can do is we can set the section type to, se to station, and you can see it shows our current train length. But this is not the right coaster style. Currently, this is a Swarzkopf coaster style. So, let's go ahead and go to Coaster Properties, Style, and let's set it to the right coaster style of our choice. I'm going to use Twisted Sit-Down Coaster, as this is a B&M sit-down, and these are basically just the kind of coaster that I'm going to use. I'm going to set the worn rail type to new, and there's this other type, rail type, and what this can allow is there's different types of track. There's one which is just standard, just regular colours, then there's one which is striped. Now the stripe has a little stripe down the side of the track, but I'm just going to use stand striped because that's cool. Now, we're not going to bother about colours yet, but we are going to change the train length. Let's change it to about 8 cars, and that should be enough. And I'm going to set it to 2 trains. There we go. 8 cars, 2 trains. Now, you can see we've kind of overshot the station, so let's just cram down the station a bit until it just about fits the train snugly. Just like that. There we go. And you see we have a bit of room on, the other side, on each side, and that's good, so we can actually add a transfer track here and like a pre-lift thing here. So let's just go ahead and add our lift. So you want to do what we do on the wooden coaster, where we added a bit of segment and then we started the lift like this. So I'm going to make the lift about mm, 48 meters tall, or around that. So I want to do the same thing we did on the wooden coaster for the top of the lift, just like that. And then we're going to get it to be flat again. So you can see it's quite a bit taller than a wooden coaster. So now, if as we're making a B&M roller coaster, B&Ms are well known for their pre-drops. Now what a pre-drop is, is, instead of it going down like this, it goes kind of back down just a little bit. So it just drops down a tiny bit, and that's to give it a little bit of speed. So to do that, all you have to do is start going down, and then immediately flatten out again, like that. There we go. Now, usually B&M pre-drops are kind of sharp, and they kind of have the snap, so we kind of want to make it a sharp, kind of, kind of small, like that. Now, on our last coaster, we did a pretty basic, just kind of curving down drop. Now, in this coaster, we, we want to kind of expand out, maybe do something a bit more advanced. Let's go ahead and go for a nice swooping drop down like that, then maybe into a loop. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to select the altitude that I want the track to be when we're in the top-down view, because if you see here, in the top-down view, you can't really see how far down it's going to be. So how, the way you can control that is by clicking on a vertice that's already that far down. So I want the bottom of the drop to be at this height or lower. So I click on that vertice, then I go into top view, and now when I place a vertice, it will be at that height. So... What I'm going to do is first, actually, I completely forgot about this. On the pre-drop, always add a tiny bit of track after it. Like, cutty bit, of like a tiny straight bit like that. And then we want to have a exit transition piece like that. There. Now what we can do is we can select that thing. And now we can do our drop. So what, I'm, what you want to do is you want to place this vertically where the drop will end. Not, you don't want to kind of form the drop shape. You want to place it where it ends. So I'm going to say my drop's going to end right there. 
Now that's not very realistic, is it? So we're going to click on the handy insert vertex tool and kind of shape the track. I know it's just going to appear to not do anything, but you can see it's added extra dots or vertices in between, which we can use to shape the drop into a desired shape. So usually B&M coasters have a drop where it kind of starts out sharp and then gets progressively smoother like that. So let's go into respective mode and see how the drop turned out. Slightly off, what we wanted to do is instead of kind of do go down at a constant angle, we want to kind of go kind of down in an arc. So what we can do is we can change this by just raising the vertices up like that. And there we go. How's that? And yes, this is why you place your roll vertices, because we don't want our lifts to look like that. Yeah, so let's go ahead and add our roll vertices in to make sure that our lift doesn't twist any more than it already has. And then we can also do the roll of the drop. So as you can see right now, the drop doesn't have any roll on it, so that would really hurt. So at the end of the pre of the pre drop, place another roll vertice, and then just after it starts to curve, place another one of these. Now, the no lateral force option won't really do in this case, so we're going to have to bank it manually. I say bank it maybe around 50, 60 degrees, like that, and then maybe use the no lateral force on the drop, but we'll see. It all depends on how well it comes out on the shaping. As you can see here, the no lateral force is working to get the shape perfect, so we're going to use it on the drop. So what you ideally want on a turning drop is it, it wants to start at a high angle and then as it goes down, you want to make sure that the forces don't really get too intense on the riders laterally. So you want to bank it as like basically try and make, bring up a couple of pictures even like go, go to a theme park and look at the rides there and examine the drops and you'll see that they have this very specific style of drop like that. Now, there's another thing which we're going to have to enable now to save us a lot of time and pain later. So, some elements require heart lining, and heart lining is basically where the track will roll around where the head of the rider would be to not cause any damage to the head of the rider. So, what we do is we go to Coaster, Coaster Properties, Mode, and click on Heart Line of Current Coaster Style. And what this will do, this will kind of lower the track a bit. But what it's done is it's actually heartlined it. So you can see here is that it actually kind of goes out a bit before it starts to turn. And that's what we want. So feel free to always go back and change the settings. I'm not really seeing like on here. I'm just going to change the banking. We got that. So you don't want you want it to look like you'd only get positive G's on the drop. That's your ideal. You don't want any laterals on the drop really. So you can see. I think that's. I think that drop is pretty good. If you um feel free to tweak it all you like. If you want your coaster to just have a straight down drop, just follow the tutorial for the wooden coaster. Uh, if you want it to have a curving drop, just do as I did in the tutorial this tutorial just now and kind of shape the drop and then kind of add the slope and circular thing. So there you go. So we've got our pre drop and our coaster. Now the most important thing save get into a habit of saving saving is important so your computer doesn't crash and all of a sudden you lose everything and you have to start all over again yeah so now we're going to tackle probably the most infamous loop element in the entire world the vertical loop now the look as may many of you know loops are not completely circular they are actually more like a teardrop they will look kind of like a point, and then it will kind of round out to a point again. And that is so it can maintain a G-force that's com comfortable for the rider. So let's start doing this. So for a loop, it's kind of simple. All you have to do is create an element that looks like you just have to shape the vertices into a loop shape. Whoops. Make sure you always click on the last vertice when you're making a loop. So shape it into the general shape of what you want your loop to look like. I usually recommend that you make the shape symmetrical so you can mimic it on the other side to get a consistent loop. So I usually like to have one, two, three 
it's a vertical. Four, five, six to vertical again. Seven, eight, nine, just like that. Now you can see it doesn't look quite right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to change, change it up a little bit. And we're going to change the shape by just dragging and moving the vertices. Now all you want to do is get the general shape of the element. You don't want to get the like the full shape. You just want to get the general shape. Because what we can do is we can use the depump vertices tool to make it into the final shape. So let's go and depump the vertices. As you may know from the wooden coaster. And there we go. It has shaped our loop into an almost perfect teardrop. So as you can see by this yellow line, you can see it's got a point instead of a complete circle. Now that's what you want for a B&M coaster. If you're making a Gerslauer, I recommend you kind of have it a bit more round. Because Gerslauer tend to do that. Oh yeah, let's also, while we're at the depumping, let's just depump the drop as well. There we go. So now we've depumped our drop and we've got our loop. But, if you go into the top view, you'll notice there's an issue. Loop intersects through itself. You'll also see this if you go into the track view. Let's just ride the coaster for that. So, you'll see we'll go, the coaster will actually intersect with itself. We'll go, we... Whoops, that's a bit high banking. If you ever notice it kind of banks a bit too much, just go back and change that point a little bit. And we got that. I like that more. So, you go up. And we've also got a few banking issues we need to fix. So let's fix all these issues. So go into top view and then drag in the last element, like the last vertice, so it kind of misses itself. That's what we want. All loops usually miss themselves. Unless you're making a death coaster, then this kind of loop would be fine. But as I'm not making a death coaster, I'm showing how to make a proper loop. So last vertice needs to miss itself. Then kind of just drag all the other vertices, so they kind of progressively miss the each other because we want to we kind of want to make it look like a very like z shape almost z or z depending on your where you're from but we want to make it look like a z from the top as you may have seen in one of the no limits tips in the old no limits game if you ever played that um well this is a simulator actually sorry um but you can see just a bit tricky to get the vertices to click sometimes but just the best way if you're having trouble with the vertices, just go into perspective mode and then do it through there. There we go. So you want to kind of make it progressive. You don't want it to be. This is not what you don't want. You don't want it to be so half the loop is all in one line and the rest of it's kind of curved. You want the whole loop to be kind of curved. So we're going to move it over just gently until you have this pattern that looks almost like a very small, like a very, very flat Z shape and there we go look at that got a loop now depump it again because you're bound to have some pumping after that there we go Let's see what it looks like so there there's our loop another way to test and see if it will make it through an element which is very important you never want to like build a whole ride and find out it doesn't make it through the first element is you change the spine to speed and as long as you can see a green bar at the top, it will make it through. So, oh, I know that it will make it through that element. We can start adding those roll vertices in. So, you'll notice if you try and add them near the top, it will do that. So, when you add in them near the top, I recommend you place one right directly at the top. And then others when it's not vertical. Like that. Now, on that one that's at the top, double click it and rotate it 180 degrees. And that way, you won't have any twisting on the whole element. So, now we've tackled probably the one of the most complicated elements in the entire game. Well, simulator, my bad, but... So, what's next? Ah, uh, let's say we kind of do maybe a, z a dive loop. Yeah, let's do a dive loop. Or, nah, that's too common. Okay, dive loops are basically not too difficult to do either, so... I'll quickly show you how to do one. So I'm just gonna so for a dive loop, you want to kind of build a slope like that. To just underneath the height of the last element. So just maybe about there. And then go into front view and take the last vertice and kind of curve it over like this. Now what we're trying to do is this is gonna be the entrance to the dive loop. 
And the reason we make the entrance like this is because that's how dive loops are. Like dive loops where you enter kind of in a half corkscrew element and then you exit in half of a loop. And the opposite of this, which is an Immelman, is where you enter through the half loop and you exit through the um the cork half corkscrew part. So as you can see, right now it's not really looking like a dive. It's more of a camelback that looks really odd. So as this is at an angle, we can't really use one of the views to do it, so like to make the half loop. So I recommend you go into like the perspective mode and get a general half of what the thing is, or the loop is. Then you kind of do what we did with the loop, except for half. There we go, like that. Let's go. Well, we're already in perspective. So you can see there's our dive loop shape. But as you can see, it's it's not quite there's something wrong about it. You can see the banking's off. Let's fix that right now. So the banking on the dive loop is just like on the loop. So place but place one right at the vertical. Like maybe actually. So on a dive loop, it kind of dives and then kind of maybe goes completely upside down about here. So place a vertice where you would expect the dive loop to be completely upside down. Then do the same thing as we did on the loop, except for make it completely upside down. Like that. So that's looking pretty nice. Except for there's another thing. It's banking to begin too early. So all you have to do to fix that is add a roll vertice earlier on. And there we go. Add some on the exit too to prevent twisting. And then we're going to depump the element, just like we did with the loop. Hopefully you guys can like understand this. Making elements like this can be quite difficult, but there we go, you can see it's now a dive loop. So let's just check and see if it will clear it with the speed comb. Aha! There we go. It should clear that. Okay. Now next, let's make a zero G roll because that's what B and M's really do. So yet again, as a sat an angle, just use the perspective mode to find a comfortable place where you think that it'll be kind of parallel to this. So, zero G rolls are easy. All you have to do is add a vertex where you want the exit of the entire element to be. So I'm going to say about there. Then you can in and you insert one vertex in the middle and drag it up. Then you insert another vertex in between those two elements that we just create, those two half, half things we made, and then you kind of drag it down a bit, maybe. Actually, this see this is actually a bit short, um, so I'm gonna make this slightly bigger. So right, I'm gonna raise these up and make it into the right shape. So like that, there we go. So that's gonna be the shape. That's gonna be the basically a zero G roll. So basically, all a zero G roll is is an airtime hill with a twist. So make a hill basically. That's all you have to do is make a hill, then. Like, I'm just going to make the exit, add a vertex on the end of exit, like that. Oh yeah, sometimes if you change the perspective view, you'll get this kind of twisting motion thing. All you have to do to fix that is go into top view and make sure everything's nice and straight, like that. There we go. So, let's start this actual roll on the zero-g roll. So, you want to place one roll vertice right where the roll will begin, and where it will end. So usually about maybe halfway up the hill. Then you want to place two about where it banks at, it's banked at 90 degrees. And then you want to bank these. So one of them you want to bank in like like in the positive direction. And another, oops, don't want to do that. You want to bank in the opposite negative direction. And you'll see that it automatically makes a zero G. Now, occasionally, you'll get it so that it'll actually kind of look like this. Now, if it looks like that, place a roll vertice there, and then roll it 180 degrees. And that should fix it. But as mine does not look like that, I will not do that. Ooh, now you can see that because this element is kind of odd, like, it's actually made the exit kind of roll out of it. So... If it rolls like that, just add maybe a couple of roll vertices afterwards, just to kind of flatten it out. 
And the same with the entrance. It will do this with the entrance too. So the entrance is not that important because that will kind of help to smooth out the element. But there we go. So that's three inversions for you. Now to check and see if this truly is a zero-g roll, go to the G-force comb. And you should see that the forces on this roll should be almost nothing like that. Whereas you can see on something like this, the forces are quite high. Now, actually, I've just noticed something. You see here, there's quite a lot of lateral G on this element. So I'm just going to go to the roll vertice and this roll vertice here and select the lateral. And there we go. Yeah, if you, if you ever see any sharp lateral spots, don't, don't feel afraid to fix them. Like, small laterals like that are fine, but anything over that should be quite lethal. Anyway, so what's the next big popular element that you usually see on a B&M coaster? Um, let's say a cobra roll. So a cobra roll is quite easy. It's kind of taking the concept of a dive loop and an immelman and combining them. So we're going to do that now. But first, we're going to depump this element. Always depump the transitions. Because then it will avoid high G-force spikes like you saw there. And G-force spikes are not fun. Maybe, to make this element slightly easier, what we're going to do is we're going to take the exit of this corkscrew. And we're going to use a rotate tool. Now, the rotate tool is probably one of my favourite additions to No Limits 2. To use it, just select the vertices you want to rotate. Because I'm going to make this so it kind of exits like that. And then go to the rotate tool, and then click and drag where you want it to modify. So I'm going to say like that, and then maybe I'm going to actually move these vertices over, so I can get it into the desired position like that. Oh yeah, I also recommend you always use the spine, the spine mode when you're actually modeling the vertices, because otherwise your computer may lag quite a bit. Yeah, that's something I've noticed, so there we go. Let's just check and see if it's smooth so far. So we go out the loop, go into the dive loop. Whee! We go into the zero G roll. Oh, there's kind of a bit of twisting there. Now, if you kind of have a bit of like twisting motion like that, try setting it to no lateral G, and that should minimize it a bit. Or what you can do is you can actually set it to slightly more so it kind of transitions smoothly out, maybe to make it slightly less like that. There we go. So now we've set ourselves up for a cobra roll. Let's make a cobra roll. So cobra rolls are quite easy. All they require is just a half a loop, half a corkscrew, half a corkscrew, and half a loop. So let's quickly just make half of a loop. Oops, always select the vertice before you make a loop. So we go we, we. Duh. I'm just going to make it kind of like that. Let me just shape the vertices into the desired shape like that. There we go, got half a loop. Depump it to make sure it's the right shape. Yeah, also check the speed and G-force. Okay, so that may be a bit small. So with a G-force, like, it's okay if you're doing small modifications like this to use the G-force comb. Otherwise, it's kind of bad. Oh, I know why. It's because it's twisting. Yeah, don't... Make sure that the g-forces you're looking at are not negative g, because sometimes the track twists without you knowing it, and then you end up with some... with the showing negative g-force, which is much more sensitive than positive g-force. So let's just depump it again to make sure we have a nice smooth transition. There we go. Slightly off the shape, but there we go. There. So there's the shape of our half loop. Oops, it looks like it's kind of gone through the ground. Yeah, if it ever goes through the ground like that, just go back, just go into the view and just kind of raise it up a tiny bit, maybe. Actually, can I just do this? Yeah. So select the whole thing and then just raise it up a tiny bit. There we go, like that. That should fix the ground. There we go. Now, let's just test and see. So, oops. Yeah, it's a bit twisty. And we'll fix that in a minute. It's just we've got to get the element to actually go upside down. So we're going to do the same thing we did on the Immel, the dive loop, but just backwards. So we're going to place it where we want the zero-g rolls banking to kind of start, which is just about there. Then flip it entirely upside down. Now, it will bug out a bit like this. It will look slightly odd. 
But trust me, when, once we add the next vertice, it will all be fine. So go to top view, click on the vertice, and the, like the ending vertice, and then kind of make the shape of the like double corkscrew that a cobra roll has, like that. There. It kind of want to look like it wants to look kind of like a U from the top, like that. There we go, like that. So you can see that the half loop has fixed itself. And we, we've got this kind of nice looking, well, kind of horrific, horrific looking half loop corks, you think. So yeah, it's basically like building a loop on its side, except we want to make it entirely round. So now we're going to go into respective mode and we're just going to lower the, actually, best thing to do is to go into right mode, or maybe the front mode, which is where it is. And you want to select the vertices and you want to lower them down a bit. Actually, those are the wrong ones. You want to lower these down a bit like that. And then lower that. And you'll see it's starting to kind of look like a cobra roll, right? There we go. Let's just let's go into respective. And you can see, there we go. It's starting to look like it. It's just the exit's a bit odd. We'll fix that in a bit when we get to that part. So add a roll vertice right at the bottom of the cor half corkscrew. And kind of bank it slightly. So it kind of... Like, so it's not entirely flat, but it's kind of at a slight angle so that it's smooth. Or maybe the best option is just add no lateral option, and that should do it itself. Now, go back into this thing and then build the second half of the loop. So we just the same thing, except we just click on the last... Actually, this is a tip. If you've already built one half of it, click on the last vertice, if you can like this, then go back into the view, and then click exactly where you place the, place the vertices on the first loop, and this will make an almost exact replica of it. So now the vertices are in the exact same place, we just have to add the roll vertices in, and then we finished our cobra roll. So do the same thing as we did on the dive loop, and there we go, look, a nice looking cobra roll. Let me just lower this out. Usually the exit of the Cobra Roll is maybe a tiny, tiny bit lower, but so unnoticeable. You kind of don't want to screw around with it too much, but there we go. That's our Cobra Roll. Now let's depump the whole thing. Actually, I'm going to raise it up a tiny bit before I depump. There we go. Um, let's go to Element, Depump. Now the more vertices you have selected, it's going to take a bit longer to depump, but it is definitely worth the wait. Excuse the Skype noises. Skype is stupid. Yep. This is actually the fifth take I've had to do of this because I've forgotten to do like some things every single time. But anyway, there. So let's do a quick speed test. Will it make it through? Ooh. Now that is not what you. That's what you don't want to see. If it goes completely flat like that, that means it's not going to clear it. So let's just fix this issue by kind of lowering the top kind of making everything a bit smaller there we go that should clear it there we go like that then depump it again and now it should clear it as you can see by the speed comb it is showing that it should have enough speed to clear through the element aha there we go so now we've done pretty much half our coaster already. Now, as you may notice, on most coasters, they have a mid-course brake run, or MCBR. Now, what, what that does is basically allows for multiple trains to be running. So this train may be going up the lift, and it may get stuck at the top of the lift because you don't have a mid-course brake run. And what that mid-course brake run allows it to do is, so in emergency, it will stop the train there to avoid them from hitting. So, let's go and build the mid-course brake run right now. Let's build, so, basically, all you do is you build half of a hill, like this. So maybe use the same kind of thing. Whoops. Want to select the exit. And then want to build maybe half a hill like this. And then you want to build kind of a brake run. But we're going to set some specific settings for this brake run to make sure that it doesn't actually stop or slow down way too much. So you kind of want to build basically what we would do for a brake run. Then add the type separators. Then save the game. 
Always, if whenever you hear the word save, just save the game. That's how it works. Anyway, so set the section to break, and you can see another train has appeared because we set it to two trains. So it detects this is a block, which is a good thing. So we want to double click this, and we want to change this setting here to maybe uh, let's try to let's try, let's double it to sixty kilometers an hour. So that means it won't actually slow it down, but in the case where it will need to slow it down, it will, which is a good thing. Now, another thing you may notice is on mid-course brake runs, it'll have a catwalk on the side. So let's add that in by going to Style Settings. Now, Style Settings allows for a lot more advanced stuff, like thicker spines and everything. But right now, we're just going to add a catwalk. So we click, like, check this left railing and catwalk, and that will enable that. And click OK. And there we go. So we've got half our layout done. We've got one, two, three, four, five inversions. What about if we end off with maybe a corkscrew? Just like classic coasters do. Like, add a corkscrew. Now, also something I'm just noticing here, it's going to run into this track. So this is a perfect place to use the rotate tool. So you could, let's, let's select this, and let's rotate it. Oops, why not actually rotate? Click on the rotate tool, click, and then kind of drag in the opposite direction. The like, kind of drag from side to side. See like that? It will kind of m burn the track, and then always go back and just move the mark the points over a bit, and then add some roll vertices in, just to make sure it doesn't get all twisted and screwed up from the thing. So there we go. Um, I'm going to set that to no lats. Whoops. If it banks the wrong way, just again, bank it manually. So much better than it's auto banking sometimes. Yeah, the auto banking isn't perfect, but if it also twists the brake run like this, yeah, again, use that kind of trick where kind of added, kind of maybe actually, if it does bank it like that, just add another, just add like three vertex vertexes in a row like that until it's completely just straight. And that should clear it up, so make sure you don't want any twisting going on here. Look at like that. There we go, so it kind of goes up, curves, hits the brake run. Now let's kind of make it go over the station. Actually, we're going to end this off. Well, we're kind of... Yeah, let's just do a corkscrew, never mind. Yep, try not to be lazy here. <laughs> let's do this. So as it's at an angle again, kind of get a side-on view of it. And add a vertex. So let's go wee like that. Maybe we could um, add a curving drop, possibly. Yeah, let's do a curving drop. So use our knowledge of the first curving drop we did, and kind of make our make another curving drop, so we can kind of have it go next to the station like this. So this is going to be not as an intense curving drop. It's just going to be kind of a mini curving drop, almost if you think about it like that. And I'm just going to set this to spine because it's much easier to place roll vertices when it's in spine mode. So just add no lateral roll vertices if you prefer that. And now we're going to start with our corkscrew. Now, on Bollinger and Mabelard coasters or B&M coasters, they have this very specific roll like inversion pattern for their corkscrews. It snaps over the top instead of being consistently rolling. Oh, and also another thing I noticed... This element is banking slightly. Let's just quickly fix that by just moving the roll vertices up. There we go, like that. So, for this, what we want to do is we're going to go into top view and we want to make kind of like a wave shape. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like, looks like, it's almost like a S shape, except for it doesn't really go like that more than it just goes like that. So, to do that, we just, oops. Wanna, if it gets really close to the end, just place vertices and then move them over. So I'm just going to place a ton. So to make the corkscrew, I'm just going to I'm going to make the general shape of the element. So there we go, like that. That's the general shape of the element. So it kind of looks like a wave, as you can see. Now it's not doesn't really look like a corkscrew from this perspective, really, does it? So let's change that by raising them up. So raise up the vertices until you kind of get it's kind of like a hill almost but not a hill there let's just raise these up now throughout this this is probably not enough vertices to make a good enough corkscrew but 
we'll we'll see. Let's go into top view and just make sure everything's nice and straight. Then we're gonna add some roll vertices in again. Roll vertices are your friend. Use them as much as you can, usually. Um, so make sure everything looks nice and symmetrical. That's what you want for a corkscrew. So that's pretty good. So you want to kind of get this kind of shape. Like the exit doesn't really matter right now. We'll fix that. Actually, let me just add an exit. So there we go. That actually, never mind. That was kind of sloppily done. Let's just quickly go into whatever view. There we go. Left view. Um, click on the exit and just add an extra one if it kind of ends up like that. There we go. So that's our corkscrew. We kind of want to make it so all these vertices are always in kind of one spot. So it doesn't look odd. There we go. So that's our corkscrew shape. It looks odd, but trust me, hopefully it will turn out correct. So at, so kind of halfway up, maybe towards the top, add roll vertices on both sides. Then bank them both at 90 degrees. See where we're going with this again? Just like we did with the other coaster. Not the other coaster, the um other element. So you can see, now we have our, now you can see it's actually shaped a corkscrew. Now, to get that snap effect, we just need to move these closer to the top. Like that. And then maybe add a couple on the exits to null them out. Now, I'm going to say we should depump this first before we get this done. Now, corkscrews are hard to shape. They are very hard to shape. They're probably one of the most more difficult elements to shape. But you can see, after depumping, we have an almost perfect corkscrew. But then again, the ain't. Just modify everything. Tweaking is your friend. Another thing is your friend tweaking. Tweak, tweak, tweak everything. There we go. Not tweet. Tweeting is Twitter. Twitter is annoying. Anyway, just going to continue to depump it until you think the shape looks perfect or as close as you can get. So that's looking slightly better, in fact. I'm actually going to insert some more vertices here. So, like, if you ever need to, insert more vertices. It doesn't harm anything. It just makes it kind of more detailed to model. So again, then again, go to top view, make sure everything's looking more like a wave than it is like a duck or something. Yeah, if if it if your element if the element you're modeling looks like a duck, there's something incredibly wrong. Um yeah, and you might want to get that checked out. But anyway, back to the point. Kind of want to make it look like a corkscrew because that's our, what we're trying to go for here is a corkscrew. So just continue to go over it, smooth it, depump it, whatever. I really hope it's recording the sound for this. That's what happened last time. Didn't actually record the sound, so I had to redo it. Yeah, so that's not a wave anymore. That's a line. Let's just fix that. Just gonna just continue going over the shape over and over and over until you get a shape that looks good. I'm just going to roll these vertices back a bit. There we go. That's slightly better. Depump it. And let's fix this exit because it looks slightly odd. There we go. Yeah, the exit's slightly weird on this corkscrew, but you get the idea. Let's see if it looks like a corkscrew. Mm, yeah, I think that's close enough. So, looks like an odd corkscrew, but you get the idea. Making corkscrews is probably one of the more difficult things to do in any, like, other No Limits series, the No Limits 1 or 2. That's probably the most difficult part. So, I say we're going to end off this coaster now by adding a few, just add a, maybe a helix, and then we'll hit the brakes. How's that? Oh, there goes my computer. Scaring the crap out of me. Yep, my computer's fan sometimes does that, and it's very annoying. Anyway. Let's add this helix. Now, I know it's not the best shaped corkscrew, but yet yeah, again, corkscrews are very difficult to shape. Uh, so I recommend that you try multiple times with a corkscrew before you consider it finally done. So let's just add a helix shape, and this will be the end of the ride here. Uh, and then we're just going to go into perspective mode like we did with the wooden coaster, and raise the points up until we have what we want. So. It's going to be kind of a sloped brake run, so I don't have to put transports on it, as transports would get destroyed in seconds if the coasters were braking on them. There we go, like that. 
no lateral this whole thing because no lateral G is the best way to go if you're making a coaster most of the time. Anyway, so let's go and let's click the end of the ride, go into top view, and then add a vertice close to this and make it straight. That uh, I'd say that's good. Oh yeah, also add a break run vertice like that. R roll things. There we go like that. Like if you have to add a lot, that's fine. Just want to make it kind of like end straight like that. And then maybe add maybe a slight transition out. And we go like that, and then just curve into the, th the end. And then let's just connect them. Well, hey, we finished our second coaster. You're meant to give yourself a round of applause. Why are you not doing that? No, seriously, I, I, I know. You, you're, you need to give yourself a pat on the back. Oh. Well, we're not done yet. Never mind. Don't give yourself a pat on the back. Don't. You don't deserve it yet. We haven't done yet. <laughs> there we go. Now, we're going to use the strict option again for this slope, just to ensure that it doesn't get all funky. There we go. Strict and strict. There we go. That curve should be fine, as long as we have brakes at the end. There we go. Let's add type separators and add those beautiful brakes. And add another type separator here so we can have another brake run. So add a brake, add a brake segment, maybe add some catwalks to it. Oh whoops, that didn't actually turn into a brake segment. There we go, now it's a brake segment. And don't enable transport device for this, but for this one here, which we're gonna make a brake segment, do enable the transport device, there we go like that. And there we go. Hey, look, save. Yeah, hopefully it did save the audio with this one, because last time it didn't, and I was very, very, very mad. But anyway, on to better and more important things. Let's see if this coaster makes it through. So let's go ahead and do all the fun stuff. Yay, like sending colors. Now, I'm going to make the colours kind of fun, because I love green. Let's make a green coaster. There we go. Actually, I might make the cross ties... Um, I'm going to make them a slightly darker shade of green. There we go, like that. The car, I'm going to make blue. Seat, I'm going to make black. I always like having black seats. Harness, I'm going to make green. Bogey, I'm going to make that kind of colour. Chassis, I'm going to have that kind of colour. So, um, supports, I'm going to keep them... Uh, let's make them blue, actually. Handrails, we want to make... I'm going to make those blue as well to match the supports. And catwalks, I'm going to make those blue as well. Make sure you hit OK and not cancel, because it sucks every single time you forget. OK, so that's that. And there we go. That should be done. So the next thing we have to do is freeze it. Yeah, here we go. Big moment, not for just you, but for me as well, to hope that Fraps actually decides to record my voice this time. And if it doesn't, I will probably drive my computer through the wall. But <laughs> besides, if you're hearing this, it did. If you're not hearing this, it didn't. But if I'm talking to you right now, then obviously it did. Anyway, let's see. Oh, look, added that stripe in that we had at the beginning. Interesting. Yeah, and it also added that wear in onto the rails that it does like in real life. So, currently there's maybe just a tiny, tiny flaw with this. No supports. Yeah. But anyway, let's test and see if it made it through our course. How about we do that first? Let's go. Now, we are going to start in our first coaster. So, press P to pause the game. Like, P to pause the game if you didn't hear me. Um, and then you can hit E to get out of the coaster. There's four. If you press E four times, it will come back to the first thing. So E, the first time, goes into fly view. After this, if you press Q, you'll go into walk view. And to get out of it, you press Q again. Now, this, then after that, if you press E, it's flyby view. So it's basically, it's kind of, the camera's kind of attached to the train. Now, to change row, seats, you press V. To change rows, you press C. As you can see, I'm spamming C here. Now we press E again, it goes into this target view. This basically is 
like kind of angled at the train, but it's not actually moving with the train. Anyway, then we're back in right view. So let's test out this coaster by going on it. So to get on this coaster, fly near the coaster train and press E um, until you're in the ride view. Then hit P. Oh, slight issue. We forgot to add the lift. Yeah, let's add that now. So pr press Control Z to undo the um, uh, thingamajig, uh, the freeze. Then add. Wait a sec. Yeah.